All right, guys, let's get into some uh, properties of how to deal with exponents. Um, so before we begin, just a little quick review, I guess, of what an exponent really even means. You know, if you saw, for example, something like this, 6 to the third power, right, just remember that that actually means uh, we, the base is 6 and then the exponent is 3. Um, so that means 6 times itself, a total of uh, three times, and let me just double check, I think it's 216, yep, that would equal 216. Okay, so the, uh, again, the exponent is just how many times you have it multiplied by itself, and this number here, again, is the base, and then, like we said, exponent, or um, sometimes it's referred to as the power, right, six to the third power. All right, so let's talk about how do we, um, how do we handle a little more complicated situations? Let's say we had for an example something like um, 6 to the 3rd times 6 to the 4th. Okay, and we don't always need to have an, like a, an actual number written out in this form. We could have it written in exponent form as well because sometimes um, the base will be a variable. We'll do that in just a second. But let's think about what each of these mean. Okay, so again, 6 to the 3rd power is 6 times 6 times 6. And then 6 to the 4th power is 6 times 6 times 6 times 6. And remember, we were still multiplying these things together. So if you take a look at what we have, this is really like 3 factors of 6. And this is 4 factors of 6. So wouldn't the final answer, if we kind of combine it all, it's 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 times 6 times 6, wouldn't that just be able to be written as 6 to the 7th power, right? Isn't there a total of 7 factors of 6? So what did it appear we did? If you take a look at those exponents, right, how are they related to 7? Well, isn't it true that 3 plus 4 equals 7? And that works because, again, this first term was three factors of six, and this one had four factors, so it ends up being um, seven total factors of six. So the rule is, if you're going to, um, if you're going to, let's, let's do one more example, then we'll do the rule. Let's say, for example, it was like three to the seventh times three to the third. Okay, the, the shortcut way to do this now is just recognize, all right, and this, this works as long as the bases are equal. Okay, in both of our examples, the base is 3. So this is going to equal 3 to the, we're going to add these exponents, 7 plus 3 is 10. Okay, and again, the reason that works, this first term here, there are 7 factors of 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, and this term has 3 factors of 3. Okay, and again, we were multiplying there in the original problem. So if you count these up, there are 10 factors of 3. Okay, which is exactly what this tells us right here. Okay, so the rule on that, that's like kind of like a formula or a property, would be anything to the a power times the same base to a different power. Okay, notice that the bases are equal. Okay, that's going to equal, the base stays the same, and the new exponent will just be a plus b. Okay, that's exactly what we did up here, right? We kept the base as 3, and the new exponent become the 7 plus 3. Okay, now this will not work um, if the bases are not the same. Let's say we did like 2 to the 5th times 3 to the 6th or something like that. We cannot use the rule on this problem because the bases are not equal. So the rule will not apply. Okay, to do this problem, you would just have to do them each separately um, and then multiply and just get like a numerical answer kind of thing. So for example, like two to the fifth power, we just wanna know what that would equal. Two times two times two times two times two. That equals 32. Okay, three to the sixth power. One, two, three, four, five, Five, six. And I'm just doing these on a calculator. Three to the sixth power is seven twenty-nine. So thirty-two times seven twenty-nine 
equals a big number, 23328. So 23,200, I'm sorry, 23,328. And that would be the only way to actually simplify this. We can't use the shortcut rule. There's no adding exponents or anything here. Um, and again, that's because the bases are different, right? And hopefully when you see the expanded form here, we can see it's not just a single number to a power. There's some twos to a power, then there's some threes to a power. It's not the same as doing three to the third times three to the 10th, okay? In that case, we could use the rule. The bases are equal. This could be written as three to the, we add the exponents, three to the 13th power. All right, so let's look at another. What if we had, for example, um, seven to the fifth power divided by seven to the third power, okay? So instead of multiplying things with the same base, let's say we are dividing them, okay? And again, let's think about what this would look like in an expanded form, okay? The numerator, seven to the fifth power, seven, 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 seven. Okay, and the denominator is seven to the third power. Okay, and what ends up happening is that each of these seven divided by sevens basically just become a factor of one, right? Seven divided by seven is one. So they're kind of just gonna cancel each other out, right? If you're multiplying something by one, it's not gonna have any impact on the answer. So, so each of those sevens cancel each other out and notice what is left. The numerator just has two factors of seven, so it becomes seven squared. Okay, can you guys see how might we get to that answer by using these exponents? Let's try one more. What if it's, let's do it with a variable. Let's say it's x to the ninth over x to the fourth. Okay, so the numerator again is one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. I should have picked a smaller number. Huh? So x to the ninth. The denominator is x to the fourth. So x times x times x times x. Right. And again, what ends up happening is x divided by x cancels out to be one. X divided by x cancels to be one. Each of those last four cancel out to remain um, just equal one. So we are only left with these guys, and how many of them are left? One, two, three, four, five. So it's x times itself five times, right? That is x to the fifth power. So can you kind of see these exponents, if four of them are in the denominator, if four of the nine that were up top get canceled out, so you're left with five um, factors of x left. So a rule for that for any general um, exponents, as long as the base is the same again, right? It has to be the same base, just like with multiplication. We are able to just subtract exponents get to x to the a minus b. Okay, so in summary, two rules are this. Um, if you have anything to a power times the same base to another power, the answer will be the same base and it will be to the a plus b. Okay, quick example. Um, 4 to the 3rd times 4 to the 2nd okay, is going to equal 4 to the 5th. Okay? Notice I did not multiply exponents, we add exponents. Okay? And the other rule, the one we just saw with division, it's x to the a over the same base x to a different exponent. We subtract the exponents. So quick example to show that one one more time. Um, four to the fifth over four to the second. Okay, both bases are the same. We can just therefore subtract exponents and get four to the third power. Okay, so hopefully that helps. Just a couple quick rules. There'll be a couple more to add onto this. Um, but just kind of hopefully you can see why these work when we did our... Um, expanded form, okay? And just one last time to show that, remember four to the third is this, four to the second is that, and that's why there our answer now has four to the fifth power, that kind of thing. So if you ever get stuck and some of these rules get confusing and you know we kind of get mixed up sometimes, especially when we add a couple more, just go back to basics and think about what did we do or what does the expanded form mean so you can kind of see why we added exponents here. So hopefully that, uh, that helps and uh, we will get into more later.